Numbers. In chapter number 11. Prophecy. Hallelujah. So what is prophecy? Prophecy, like someone said, is what the prophet do say. When the prophet talks, they prophesy. <laughs> I said, that must be the smartest answer there is. <laughs> this prophecy is what the pro- is what prophet says. <laughs> All right. Praise God. But notice here, the Bible tells us, uh, you can study this for yourself, that God told Moses to gather 70 elders that will help bear the burden of the people with him. Yeah. All right? And so Moses called 70 uh, elders and officers. And we later discovered that 68 of them actually came before the tent or came before the temple. And the spirit rested upon them. And they did what? And they did what? They prophesied. It's in there. Numbers in chapter 11. Are you there? Yes. Good. Anyways, but there, there was these two gentlemen who were numbered amongst the 70 elders. One of them was Edad and the other one was Medad. Amen. And they were not gathered with the 68 who were before Moses. But the Spirit of God came upon them as well. All right? And they did what? And they prophesied. Amen? And when they prophesied, someone got to find out that Edad and Medad prophesied. And Joshua, who was Moses' assistant at that time, he was a young guy. He didn't know so much about the things of the Spirit. Uh, got offended and told Moses to tell Edad and Medad to stop prophesying. Come on here now. Amen. He said, tell them to stop. Because prophecy was a sacred thing. It wasn't for everybody. You have to be a prophet. To prophesy. Amen. You've got to be a prophet to prophesy. So his understanding was that, okay, the 68, I get it. The 68 came before, before Moses and the cloud, you know, which was synonymous to the Spirit of God coming upon them. When it came upon them, they prophesied. Joshua didn't have a problem with the 68 prophesying in church. But he had a problem with the other two who were not in church. Like some people say, prophecy is only for church. We only prophesy when we are in church. Because that was the mentality that Joshua had at that time. Okay? Like I said, he didn't have a problem that the 68 prophesied. But I believe his problem was that these two we're not in a consecrated place. Does that make any sense? That something must be wrong with that prophecy because they were not prophesying in the temple. So that's another revelation there. So, but the Spirit of God doesn't distinguish between uh, that's a temple and that's not a temple. No. He came upon 68 of them that were in the temple and came upon the remaining two who were in the field. And there are many too, also what prophesied. Like some people think that if you don't, you can prophesy until you dress in a certain way. You know, I've, I've seen folks like that. You know, you have to have a prayer show on you for, for you to prophesy. Now, I understand where that is coming from uh, because in the Old Testament, they had that going on. Okay? But in the New Testament, God don't need a prayer show. You understand? Uh, he comes on you. If he's already in you, you have it. Amen. But look at what Moses said. When, he, when Joshua, look here. And Joshua said, uh, verse 28, Numbers in chapter 11 and verse 28. So Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, one of his choice men, answered and said, Moses, my Lord, forbid them. 
stop them. Then Moses said to him, Are you zealous for my sake? In other words, I would to God that all of God's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit where? Upon them. Because Moses must have seen a glimpse of God's will. Because Moses' desire was not just for the 70 people to prophesy. He wanted everybody to prophesy because he knew the importance of prophecy. He knew the power of prophecy. He knew that walking in the miraculous was connected to prophecy. And that's why in the Old Testament, the prophets were called seers. They see things and hear things that others don't see and others don't hear. When they see things, they tell it. When they hear stuff, they proclaim it. And when the prophet in the Old Testament spoke, it was as though God had spoken. Because that was how God spoke to his people. He spoke to them through the prophets. These were chosen men and women who did not live the ordinary life. Because back in those days, prophets did not live the ordinary life. I'm serious. They didn't live in the city like everybody else. Most of them didn't have a social life. They didn't live in the city. They lived in the forest. They lived on the mountain. They lived a consecrated life. Amen. Their number one responsibility for life was to hear from God and tell the people what God is saying. So they needed to be attuned with God 24 hours a day. And living like everyone else wasn't going to cut it. So they were not exposed to the distractions that others were exposed to. Now, I'm talking about the, 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 the office of the prophets. But there were also men who prophesied in the Old Testament who were not necessarily prophets. They prophesied. Because what it takes to prophesy really is the Holy Ghost coming on you. Amen. Come on here now. I'll give you an example. The donkey prophesied. You didn't know that. The donkey prophesied. Because to prophesy means to speak a word from God or to speak the word of God. Mm, a man that would declare the word of God is a prophet. Amen. 